Jens Peter Miesenberg, Telia Company, Head of Industry Vertical. I'll be talking about the, the connected car, where we're focusing very much on the vibrant uh, ecosystem of service partners setting us apart. I'll be talking a bit about our uh, connected car uh, that we actually launched uh, 1st of November uh, this year. A bit like um, Vodafone went out and said that they will be launching something, I thought that was interesting, uh, something in 2017 within IoT. Of course, when Vodafone does something, it's much bigger than the Intelia company. We went out in the same way last year and said we will be launching a connected car in 2016. I think this is something we uh, will be doing very much within IoT. You need to come with some commitments and then figure out how you do the stuff uh, moving forward, kind of uh, going all in. When we looked at connected car, uh, first of all, we did a, a lot of uh, analysis looking at the market. What should we do within IoT? We already send the megabytes from A to B. That's our traditional IoT or M2M uh, business. It's been so for, for many years. But um, we also wanted to make some more vertical bets. Um, and if you want to do a vertical bet, it's either you do it or you don't. So it's very much uh, all in. Uh, and there we found that single vehicle uh, connectivity is an interesting area. We already uh, provide connectivity for Teslas in the Nordics. But looking at the existing cars, the cars that are three or four years old, uh, we have 180% taxes on cars in Denmark. So you buy a house and you buy a car and the price is pretty much the same. So it's a, a really expensive uh, piece of equipment. So you don't just go out and buy uh, a connected car. Uh, you know, if you want one, you want to buy a completely new one. You, it's a big investment. So we found a, an interesting uh, uh, area here, and we went out and asked the customers, what is it you actually care about? What is it the driver? What is it the passenger? What is it the owner cares about when it comes to connected cars? And this is what we found. Um, that cars, is, is, we use a lot of time in a car. It's a really important part of our day-to-day. -day. We, we've heard the uh, earlier speakers talking about not being able to deliver your kids at school in the morning if it, it breaks down. Um, it's also really expensive. And, well, if it doesn't work, my day uh, starts on the wrong, uh, wrong leg, so to speak. So we kind of translated that into things that we could use as uh, value drivers. Before talking technology at all, we looked at, okay, how can we give our customers more control over their car so they know how is the car? Where is the car? Is it okay? Uh, it's also about entertainment, of course. Being a telco, Wi-Fi uh, and internet uh, connectivity is, uh, is a given. What can we do uh, when it comes to making it more economical? Is there something we can share with the user or with other partners that uh, makes it much easier to uh, maintain and, and run a car? We also found that it's not something a telco can do by itself. This is really something you need to do uh, to go with partners. Uh, all about these different use cases. Telco is really, really good at building stable, secure, scalable solutions. We're not the most innovative companies uh, on earth. And we don't know all that much about cars. I usually say I have a French car. It shows how much I, I think about cars. Um, so we need to go out and interact with, uh, with partners. And that was one of the other reasons for going out and announcing this a year ago, in November last year, that we were going into the connected car space. It was to activate the ecosystem, to say, guys, come and talk to us. We're going to be doing this. Let's find a way to cooperate and deliver uh, some useful services to the end customer. So we went out and thought in the ecosystem into our solution. So Telia Sense, as we named the, the, the offering, actually Telia Sense is kind of an umbrella for our uh, consumer-oriented IoT solutions, uh, the car being the first one. It's really thought out from the beginning as a, a solution where, of course, Telia comes with, uh, with the plumbing, we come with the platform, and we try to orchestrate an ecosystem of partners. The solution really has three legs. Uh, you have an OBD dongle, that's what we use uh, to, to gain connectivity and, and read some things from the car. OBD dongle delivers uh, a GPS, it has an accelerometer, it has a 2, 3 and 4G uh, modem, of course, uh, Wi-Fi. Um, so 
one of the things we can read from the car is where is it, how is it doing, how's the battery level, uh, and give that information back to the user. So I can see where my car is. I can see if someone hits it, the accelerometer will give an, uh, you an advice if someone bumps into your car in the evening. So it's kind of a, an alarm as well, not to be confused with a real car alarm. Uh, giving you a driving journal, so how far have I driven, being able easily to share that information with uh, my employer, so being able to get uh, money back for my trips. There's also a Wi-Fi hotspot. Most of the iPads and the tablets we sell in Nordics, there's not a SIM card in it. And most of them sit in the back seat in the hands of teenagers and uh, younger people. And here, one of the th our approach was very much, what's the use case? Coming from the smart home, my uh, kids, they're running around with iPads looking at uh, Netflix. They get into the car, we drive off to the summer house or where we, we're off to. They continue their Telia experience. That's our way of thinking. So this is why uh, connectivity is so, uh, so interesting for us. And last but not least is what services can we provide on top from partners. So if you have like um, insurance companies is uh, something that's very traditional thinking about uh, connected cars. Can they offer how you drive or how far you drive insurance? So based on how far you've driven, you give, give you a price or also how you drive. If you drive like a maniac, you don't get a discount. If you drive sensibly, well, you do get a discount. This is very new to Nordics. We don't have usage-based insurance uh, in Nordics yet. <laughs> Uh, smart um, repair shops. One of the things that uh, we found is that there's a whole industry that just wants to help in this digital transformation. Coming into a repair shop, when they uh, service a car and send it off, they lose contact with the customer. They're kind of out of touch with them. They don't know how far the car's driven. They don't know if something happens to it. They don't know if there's an alarm going off. Here, they really want to be proactive instead of reactive. Today, something goes wrong, I call the repair shop, something's gone wrong, so they just have to pick up the phone. Now, they are actually can see that, okay, Inspeter, your battery's pretty low. One of the key th reasons for not being able to start a car in the Nordics is a weak battery. They can be proactive, call me. It's a planned service, so it's much cheaper for them to offer their service on top of ours, saying, okay, for a specific amount, we'll keep your car running. This makes it much more interesting for uh, the end user. Uh, so coming with very specific car-related uh, use cases that we as an operator have no clue about and actually have no expertise in, but we're really good at delivering the data uh, necessary and also being able to handle the privacy. We went out and did uh, extensive surveys regarding privacy on connected cars uh, and found that well, people are very concerned about it. You know, who gains data? Uh, who gets insight about me. Uh, one of the two things we did was, uh, when you go in and buy Telesense, we, you don't have to tell who you are, how old you are, what sex you are. You just buy it. It's just like walking into a, a local um, a, a shop where you buy a navigator. I don't have to tell them where I live either. I'm buying something for my car. We know the VIN number of the car when you plug it in. There's lots of security things going on to pair it with the car because we need to validate the data for the insurance companies, but we don't necessarily have to know who the end customer is. We want to know, but we need to earn the right. So coming with additional services that make sense that I, as a user, tell the telco who I am. Um, being able to handle privacy is actually um, a key selling point for us towards these partners. If you go to the local uh, repair shop, Data privacy, it's not something they are very comfortable with. They know they need to be compliant. And they're really leaning towards us as a telco saying, OK, can you make sure that the data I get, I'm allowed to use it? And being very transparent to the user in the app, saying, OK, you, you get the solution to connect a car. If I want to share data with the local uh, roadside assistance or, uh, or a repair shop, this is what we're going to be sharing. You press the button, yes, I want to share it. And I want to stop sharing. So very much enabling the, the end user to make his uh, or decisions. We call it not big brothers watching you, but big mothers watching you. So being able to know a bit how things are going. Um, I can tell you, I, I expect this is one of the questions. Has it been a success? We've been launched for uh, a month. Yes, it has. It's, uh, it's, it's taking off really well. 
the, the waiting list we had for the service is only second to the waiting list for an iPhone. There is somewhat of a delta between the two, but it's uh, by far the <laughs> but it's by far the most interesting Telia offering that we've ever launched. When we announced it last year, we've never received so much press. We, we, we could see press in, uh, in the Australia, in Asia, and other places because it's something new, IoT. So yes, IoT is a hype, but it's also something that's really good for us telcos to use to get attention for some services. We don't sell IoT here. We sell a connected car or a modern car to the end user. We sell digital transformation to our business partners. We don't sell IoT. And we don't make cars, we make them awesome. That's uh, our bit of forward-leaning um, tagline. 